Okay. So my name is Julio Alvarez. So I have a little weird testimony. Usually you hear a lot with people who have lived in horrible parts of the city or whatever. So I grew up Catholic. My parents were Catholic. My father was Catholic. But we only went to Catholic church like once every year. You know, the normal Easter, Christmas, whatever. And I never understood what it was, but there was one thing that my dad taught me, that Jesus was God. After that, throughout my years as a child, I went through a lot of troubles. My dad was dying in the hospital. He was pronounced dead five times. He was in a coma for over a year. They said he would never be able to live again, never be able to walk, and that he should be dead right now. He's living to this day by the grace of God. My mom at that time was also out doing something else. So I, through the time of eight years old to 12, I basically didn't have any parents. And I was the oldest of three brothers. So I had to set an example. Throughout my years in middle school and high school were just hard for me. I was always depressed all the time. Didn't know how to handle things. In my freshman year of high school, I started going to a church that my friend had brought me to. It was a Pentecostal church, but I only went because of my friends. They spoke Spanish. I don't speak any Spanish. I just sat there just because. I was there for a year, not knowing why, but I wanted to go. Three months in, my mom told me I couldn't go to church anymore. I never knew why. I never understood why can I not go to church. And I was fighting and fighting and fighting to go, not knowing why. I was there for a year. Randomly out of nowhere, she said, why don't you just go to church? After, six months after, her telling me not to go. I go, I listen to this message, and it was preached on how God is the motor and we are the clay. And that's in Isaiah 64, 8. And it says, but now, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. And the message that was preached that when clay is hard, it needs to be beaten down to be soft again so God can mold us in his perfect image. And I looked at that, and that was my life. It was, I hardened my heart so much because of what I went through. There's so many situations I didn't want to open up. And I was being beaten down because God wanted to soften me. God wanted to mold me in an image that he wanted me in. So proceeding on, after that, I started going to a church where I soaked up the word of God so fast. And, you know, the Bible says that God does a good work in us. It was just like a, I was like a sponge that went through persecution in high school from parents, from friends, saying that I was a hypocrite. Going through persecution to the point where I was taken out of church again because as a, as a teenager, you have to listen to your parents. I was not allowed to go. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Since I was taken out of church, I could not hear the word of God, so my faith was diminished. It was destroyed. I was so depressed, it led me to suicide, almost led me to suicide, depression every night. Until one night, God does things in mysterious ways, the Bible says. My friend who did not believe, as I was telling him, I think I'm killed myself tonight. He sent me this song by Casting Crowns called, It's Who Am I? It says, Who Am I that the Lord of all the earth? You know, would there to know my name? And it changed me. And since then, God was restarted the fire in me. And a lot of people will say, I kind of went against my parents' word. I used it. Oh, I'm going to work, but sneak out and go to church. And I believe that's radicalism. I went against my parents to serve Christ. And I believe God honors that. And you know, that's, that's basically what my testimony is based off of. You know, I was beaten down by parents, by family members, by everything. And if you were beaten down before, you can understand. But if you serve Christ, he honors your sacrifice. To the end, he who endures shall be saved. Amen. Amen.